good day to you each, my beautiful and wonderful people, on this wonderful Thursday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's your favorite girl, Simply Michelle, the host with the most. And I have an incredible episode lined up today. But first, head on over to Amazon and purchase your copy of one of my books, Love, A Misconstrued Word, Created on Purpose for Purpose, and the Dear Diary Trilogy. You can also pick up my journals, Journaling the Journey with Jesus, Seasons Change, and Sweet Dreams. If you're looking for a mental health coach to walk with you on your journey to greatness, book your appointment now on my website at createdonpurposeforpurpose.godaddysites.com because you matter and so does your mental health. Got a story you want to tell? Your personal testimony or maybe some biblical truth explains how the Holy Spirit gave it to you? Well, let's talk about it and let me help you publish and bring your words to life. Reach out to me at createdonpurpose314 at gmail.com. Now, do me a solid and hit that follow button and be sure to tell me what you think of today's episode. And without further ado, let's dive into today's episode, The Acts of prayer. As we know, prayer is a very essential part of having a relationship with Christ because that is communication between us and the Father. Prayer is the foundation of building that relationship with God. You cannot build a relationship with anyone without talking to them, whether it's someone that you're wanting to get to know to possibly date, um, whether you're married, you cannot build on your relationship and get to know an individual unless there is some sort of communication. And that is the same with God. We build that relationship so that we can hear from God, whether it's like direction that we need or clarity, revelation. There may be some warnings that we need to know about that's up ahead or maybe guidance. We need prayer in our life on a day to day basis. And honestly, maybe he just wants to tell us how much he loves us and he wants to let us in on secrets that only he can reveal to us just as the scripture in jeremiah 33 and 3 tells us you know we build the relationship because of how god how good god has truly been to us and not just to ask him for something that's part of it but most of it should just be an intimate time between you and god Now, there have been plenty of times that so many people have asked me if there is a particular way that I pray. And I got to be honest, the short answer is no. To me, I really just say whatever is on my heart or whatever is in my spirit at that given point. Um, You know, yes, I pray when I first get up in the morning, you know, I pray before I go to bed. There are times to where, you know, the Holy Spirit will wake me up in the middle of the night to pray or intercede, you know, for someone or just things in general. There are times throughout the day I may just, you know, have a short prayer or conversation with God. So I don't even have like a specific time. It's just whatever is on my heart. You know, sometimes I may just say, you know, God, what is it that you want me to do today? Or how is it that I can be of service to you today? That is a part of prayer. Even when I can't pray. I know God hears my tears and the Holy Spirit intercedes for me on my behalf because let's be honest, we truly don't know what to pray for most of the time. And we know this because Luke 11 tells us about how Jesus teaches, you know, us to pray basically the Lord's prayer. Now, we must remember that prayer moves mountains, and that is a great reason why I cannot tell 
someone, you know, what their prayer should be because all of our journeys and needs are different, yet we speak to the same God. I'm hoping anyway that we are speaking to the same God. Now, I can guide you or give you some examples based upon my own experiences, but only the Holy Spirit can truly show you how the Father wants you to pray, especially if you are praying for something specific. Now, even though I don't follow like a specific prayer per se, because my prayers change from moment to moment, just as I've stated, but I do incorporate specific keys into my prayer life. And I do believe having these keys will allow for effective prayer time with our father. So let's get into it and let's break down the acronym or the actions of acts of prayer. Now, first off, Let's talk about the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. Y'all know me by now to know that I'm a word person. Even if I think I know what the word means, I'm going to look it up and allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, show me something or he's always giving me analogies. So I'm, I'm waiting for him to do that. So when we think of the definition of ACTS, it says to take action to do something. And we know from learning in elementary school that a verb shows action to do something. And when we dive into each of these points, you will find that each of these things require action from each of us. So let's start with the A in Acts. And the A is for adoration. When we consider the definition of adoration, it means deep love and respect to worship. When we are trying to get the attention of someone, let's think about it. We may say, you know, nice things to them or do something out of the ordinary with the intent that they see us in the way that they have never seen us, right? So we go out of our way to help you know, that person understand that we love and respect them, that we adore them and value them in our lives. That is the same way with God. When we think about all the things he has done in our life and just his goodness alone, we come to him soliciting his attention to our worship to him, letting him know how much we love and honor and respect him. We just want to love on him just as he loves on us each day. It's like, I guess, in a human sense, we like how we feel when people rave about us. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 kind of like, You know, it feels good. It put a smile on our face. We have some sort of happiness or joy, especially when we have been overlooked and forgotten about. And this is one of the things that God loves to hear, too. He wants us to rave about him just like we rave about other people because he wants to know that just like he has not forgotten us, we haven't forgotten about him either. So Colossians 1, 15 through 20 says, no one can see God, but Jesus Christ is exactly like him. He ranks higher than everything that has been made. Through his power, all things were made, things in heaven and on earth, things seen and unseen, all powers, authorities, lords, and rulers, All things were made through Christ and for Christ. He was the before any, he was there before anything was made and all things continue because of him. He is the head of the body, which is the church. Everything comes from him. He is the first one who was raised from the dead. So when all things, Jesus has first place. I hope you guys caught that. God was pleased for all of himself 
to live in Christ. And through Christ, God has brought all things back to himself again, things on earth and things in heaven. God made peace through the blood of Christ's death on the cross. So now let's take a look at the C in the word Acts. And the C stands for confession. The definition of confession is a formal statement admitting that one is guilty of a crime. Now, y'all, let's face it. We all are guilty of something every single day. The word tells us that all have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God. In prayer, this is the time where you confess all of your sins. And I like to always include the sins that I'm unaware of that I have committed. You know, you know, Lord, please forgive me of X, Y, Z sin and forgive me of the sins that I unknowingly was doing. Maybe it was a thought that I was thinking that I just really wasn't in tune with at the time that I was thinking, you know what I mean? You know, maybe I should have went somewhere. I should have went somewhere, but I didn't. Maybe I should have said something, but I didn't. You know, maybe I shouldn't have said something, but I did. So, you know, I'm confessing these things openly to God because I need him to forgive me of those things. So often, many don't like this part of prayer because we can't admit when we are wrong. We don't want to admit when we're wrong to one another. So we definitely don't want to admit when we are wrong in the eyes of God. Because, of course, we we respect God knowing that he's all power and all glory. So it's kind of like, how can I go to God and and tell him that I done did this or, you know, I'm over here doing that and asking him to forgive me? How, How can I go to, you know, a God like that and say, I'm sorry, these are the things that I did. Please forgive me. Because, I mean, we have a hard enough time going to one another asking for forgiveness. So if, if we're struggling with going to one another to do that, we're definitely definitely going to struggle with, you know, going to God. But if we think about it, when we were kids, we didn't um, do, you know, things right as well. Right. So let's use the example of, you know, being in school, you know, and and maybe it's report card time and we didn't do as well as we thought we did. And when we look at our report card, you know, we know that when we get home, our parents is going to take some sort of action towards us to chastise us, whether it's having that conversation with us or, you know, maybe getting a whooping or being grounded, you know, from the things that we enjoy until the next report card came out. You know, this is how our parents did. So in order to avoid all that, we try to hide the report card. So it's kind of like, okay, if the parent don't know their report card is coming out, You know what I mean? I can hide it. I won't even give the report card. But if you had parents, you know, back in the day, like my parents were, especially my father, it was like he had a calendar just knowing when report cards were going to come out. You know what I mean? And we already knew that when we got home from school, that report card needs to be laid on the table, all of them, me and my brothers. And when he got home from work and did everything he had to do, he sat down and he looked at the report cards. So we couldn't hide it from our father. But if you kind of think about it in general, you know, if that were the case with you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like you do, you, you try to hide it to avoid it. But that's how many of us do God as well. We are ashamed or we embarrassed to admit that, you know, we were wrong. So we don't bring it up thinking that God would never know if, you know, we don't tell it. But the truth is, he knew you would um, actually do those things far more before, you know, you thought you would do it. But once you go to him and confess that sin, and ask for forgiveness, 
that is something that's going to be broken off of you. You can't expect God, you know, to forgive you if you're not asking for the forgiveness. And then you have to forgive yourself as well. You know, you can't expect God to do one thing and then you're not putting in the effort because remember, we learned that, you know, these are things that are done by action. So in asking for the forgiveness, that's action. Not confessing the sin only deepens within us and becomes a stronghold for the enemy to keep tapping into um, things that's keeping us bound rather than taking it to God in confession and letting him free us from that sin. Jesus already paid the cost for it. So, you know, we should be able to go to God openly and ask him for forgiveness. Hebrews 4 and 16, 4, 4, 14 through 16 says, since we have a great high priest, Jesus, the son of God has gone into heaven. Let us hold on to the faith we have for our high priest is able to understand our weakness. He was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. Let us then feel very sure that we can come before God's throne where there is grace. There we can receive mercy and grace to help us when we need it. So if we move to the next letter in Acts, which is T, T is for Thanksgiving. And when we look up the word Thanksgiving, it says it's the expression of gratitude, especially to God. Yes, Thanksgiving is more than just a holiday where you come together with family and friends to eat good food, make memories, love on each other and give thanks. Every day in this walk with Christ should be a day of Thanksgiving. Now, I want you to think as a parent for a moment. Everything you have done from the time you found out you were pregnant, ladies, all the way up until now, how does it feel when you hear your child say, thank you? How do you feel when your child appreciate every single uh, day and thing that you've done? I, I understand, you know what I mean? There is Mother's Day, there's Father's Day, Father's Day, and maybe even Christmas and birthdays. But what about just because it's Tuesday? How many said, thank you for cooking dinner? Thank you for paying the bills. Thank you for keeping me and raising me because somebody parents gave them up. Thank you for buying all the nice clothes and shoes. Thank you for punishing me when I need it. And thank you for loving me when I need it. I mean, you, you get the point. Now, can you imagine how God feels when he hear that from us? How grateful and thankful we are for the things he did do and the things he didn't allow. Thanking him for being kind, gentle, sweet, loving, forgiving, and patient with us. Can you see the huge smile, you know, on his face, you know, knowing that we are truly grateful and not just some entitled brat walking around in arrogance, never taking the time to just say thank you. Sometimes that's all it takes, just like with us. We just want to hear it every now and then. And all we should want to do is please the Father in everything that we do. So seeing him smile would, would actually make my day as, you know, my children come to me and tell me, thank you. It makes my day when I hear my children say that. Um, so we show those that we love how much we appreciate them. And God should be the main one on the list for the day that we give thanks to. Even in praying, we should thank him for the things we submit to him that we desire or need, knowing that he will fulfill all that we ask. Psalms 100 actually covers it all, if you want to be honest. But it says, shout to the Lord, 
all the earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before him with singing. Know that the Lord is good. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep he tends. Come into his city with songs of thanksgiving and enter in co- into his courtyards with song and praise. Thank him and praise his name. The Lord is good. His love is forever and his loyalty goes on and on. Just as I said, that actually covered it all. Honestly, if we're looking at the total acronym of the word ACTS, A-C-T-S. But lastly, but certainly not least, we have the S and the S stands for supplication. Now, when I looked up the word supplication, it means the action of asking or begging for something earnestly and humbly. It says the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. We know we don't have to go to God and beg. Not for anything. But we should ask him with a humble heart, seeking him earnestly. We have to let go of the pride in thinking that we have to do everything on our own or we have to make this happen. We have to do it according to our ability. We have to release that and give it to God and let God do it his way. The scripture says that if we ask, it will be given to us. If we seek, we will find. And if we knock, the door will be open to us. So this is the part where we give God our petitions, all of our desires and needs with great confidence that what we have asked for has already taken place for us as long as it is in alignment with his will. Now, here's the thing. The desires we have, we don't know to desire those things, especially those things that seem so unrealistic and impossible. But God gives us those desires. And one thing I believe is that if he gave us those desires, then he already has a resolution in place predestined for that to come to us. I'm going to give an example. My baby boy, he loves to play Fortnite, you know, with his video games or whatever. And with that video game, they're able to purchase what they call V-Bucks in order to make purchases in the item shop to help them with their, you know, gaming experience. They can get costumes. Well, they call them skins or whatnot. Um, And they can do all sorts of things. They can level up, you know, when season passes come out, they're able to purchase those season passes. So there are times that, you know, he will come to me boldly asking me, If he can get some V-Bucks because maybe a new season is coming out or he just, you know, want to purchase something from, you know, the item shop or whatnot. He trusts me enough to know that if he asks and he is in the right standing with me, with his grades, keeping his room clean and being a respectful person, he knows without a shadow of a doubt That mommy is going to get him whatever it is that he asked for. Sometimes he will ask me more than once and tell me he will be patient and wait for me to give it to him when I'm ready to give it. But other times he will come to me earnestly. He will seek me. He will come to me diligently. Mommy, you didn't forget. You know, mommy, you know, are you still going to get the V-Bucks for me? And one of the things that the Holy Spirit really just showed me by using this analogy, when Braylon comes to me and asks only once and trusts me with the outcome, I need y'all to really catch what I'm saying. 
That's when I move faster and I give him more than what he has expected, making sure that I reward him because he trusted me and he didn't bug me about it. He came to me with the confidence knowing that I know mommy is going to do this for me because I've made my grades. I kept my room clean. I've been respectful. I've been obedient. I've done everything I know I'm supposed to do. So mommy has no other choice to give to me what I asked for if it's in her will. But then at the same time, if he comes to me asking me over and over and over, he's not really, you know, trusting that I'm going to do it for him. You know, I take my time giving it to him because in the back of my mind, I heard you the first time and I've already said, yes, I'm going to do this for you, but I'm waiting on the right time to give it to you. Submit your request to God knowing that he has already answered. And though it may tarry, wait for it because you have no idea what God is doing behind the scene, setting the blessing up just for you. Scripture says we have not because we ask not. So make your request known to God, no matter how big or how crazy you may think it is, because it's only crazy until it happens. First John 5 and 14 through 15 says, and this is the boldness we have in God's presence, that if we ask God for anything that agrees with what he wants, He hears us. If we know he hears us every time we ask him, we know we have what we asked him for. Well, you guys, that concludes today's episode. I thank you so very much for tuning in. I truly hope you found encouragement, motivation, guidance, and inspiration to live a life aligned with your true purpose. Again, I am your favorite girl, Simply Michelle, the host with the most. Don't forget to tune in each Wednesday morning for your midweek encouragement. And remember, you are unique and there's a purpose waiting to be fulfilled within you. Don't let it go unnoticed or unexplored. Now go have a great day on purpose. See you next time.